back to business on the Pook E50. So if you haven't, make sure you go watch the other video because we finally got the Pook running. Um, I believe that was like part four of the video build series of just completely, just completely building this stunt moped and it is just, I couldn't have asked for it to turn out any better other than the issues we had uh, at the end. If you watched the last one, I went to ride it and it basically had a weird, weird clutch grabbing issue and it seemed like it was running really hot. Probably the most simple temp gauge you can get for an air-cooled engine. Um, it's just the spark plug ring in here that goes around the spark plug ring, tells you your head temp. All right, so here's the gauge itself. Here we got our actual spark plug ring, and you're gonna have to take off the crush washer that goes on your spark plug as well, since you'll be using that ring right there. I was going through here, and I was gonna make a bracket and have it like come off this bolt, have it mount here. But then I realized I kind of like it just simply just stick it right on it, because then when I'm riding, I can just look down right there or look between here and see it pretty clearly. So just get this little uh, crush washer off your plug. I usually just come in with some small snips and snip it. And you can open it up and kind of thread it out. Sometimes you can get lucky and thread them off, but sometimes once they're crushed, they're kind of a pain. Clutch is, uh, something's going on with the clutch, man. This thing does not want to ride right. I'm going to try it anyways just to show you guys how the clutch is. I put Melosi Springs in this Treatland Jammer clutch. Or they're too hard and it's grabbing, but then when it drops a little bit RPM, the clutch doesn't grab on the basket anymore and it's allowing it to slip. It's grabbing and it's rolling and it's just like super boggy and then it just revs to the moon real quick and it doesn't go anywhere. So it's like the clutch slips for a second. I think the clutch springs are too tight for my setup, so I'm going to try softer clutch springs which i got right here a bag of clutch springs for the pook so in order to change those we have to drain all the oil out pull this kicker cover case off and then pull the clutch out and then go from there so uh, that's just what we're doing boys but this is what it sounded like last time Put our piston stop in. Get this clutch off. Come in here and get the clutch springs out. These were upgraded Melosi springs. I went off this because someone recommended using these springs. But I don't know what to say other than uh, I think that might be your issue. So to really tell the difference, I'm going to go back to the stock springs that come with this clutch. Now, time to put it all back together. Alright, it's all back together. Let's see what this thing does this time. It's time to get this Pook Maxi right and correct. We're gonna ride this thing today. It's official. We got everything we need over here to make this thing as dialed as it should be. So a lot of the people that I know that build and ride these things have told me that the jammer clutches are garbage. So I went ahead and I upgraded myself to the claw, I believe it is called. So you take a stock 50 clutch, you put these nice like Kevlar pads on, as you see here. In order to do that, we gotta take this all apart, take off these little C-clamps that are right here on the pad post. We got a tap and die set here, and we're going to be drilling that out, tapping it to an M4. Then we have these M4 screws that we then place into here. So we also went and got all the springs that I possibly could use. It's standard strong and super. I think we're going to go in the middle with strong at first. And we got some type F transmission fluid. A few things that we got to do to make this work. I will show you guys right now since this thing's garbage. This thing does start, man. It does run. It runs good. Motor's all good. Just that clutch issue. Kickstart could be better too. It doesn't want to grab all the time. You gotta find the sweet spot. You can legit smell the clutch burn. 
you can legit smell the clutch burning on it and you can just hear it because the motor will just like it grabs for a second and then it just spins real quick to like 10k rpm and then it'll grab again and you can just feel like it's like disengaging engaging disengaging but i think the clutch itself is just not it's just not good this should be a lot better got this whole setup we're about to get to work on doing that all right so first thing we're going to be doing here is getting these old clutch shoes off which we will have to be grinding down these posts as well to get rid of this part for the circlip because it'll get in the way of the brace itself. Just to sit more flush against the shoe area, otherwise they'd have a chance to slide around. Oh, these just come off. All right. So here's where we're going to have to come in and shave down these posts. I wish I had a belt sander because we want to get it to this ridge, but I think we'll be able to do it with an angle grinder and then file them flat. To get it grinded down to this little lip where the circlip was, but you don't want to go too low because if the plate's rubbing on the shoes, when you tighten that plate down, the shoes aren't going to be able to pivot. So you got to get it just to the right spot, which is going to be like right above that last groove. So I'm using an angle grinder. I would definitely recommend using a belt sander. What do we not have? A belt sander. So we're going this way, boys. Ooh, that is perfect. We got that one perfect. I don't know if you can see that. It's raised just like a millimeter over the pad, and uh, that way. That way when that plate's sitting down on there, it doesn't rub it. So we should be good on that one. All right, so we got the clutch base all grinded off and now it's in the vise and now it becomes the fun part of drilling it, which I'm not excited for because I don't want to mess it up, boys. I don't want to mess it up. Alright, we got one hole drilled. It's a little cockeyed, but she's drilled in there. Let's see if we can tap it real quick. All right, the posts, posts on the clutch are all drilled and tapped, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that in there. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it has threads now, both sides, drilled and tapped. Now I just gotta double check real quick that our plate doesn't rub on the pads itself, and then we can throw everything together. I think we're gonna be just perfect, actually. So the plate's all the way down, plate's all the way down, and we're not rubbing on the pads. So, looks like we can throw everything in now, our springs, and Loctite that plate down. We're going to go with the strong springs at first. I guess you'd call it the medium for right now. I have standard, strong, and super, so we're going to go with the strong ones. Alright, it is time to throw the new clutch in. So we're going to take the old clutch out, put the piston stop in, crack this bad boy out. Pull it all off, and then we got our new boy throw her on in there, and hopefully, hopefully this will be the first time we get to really try the pook. I'm hoping this works. That thing sounds crazy when it comes off. All right, new clutch is in there, and I'm spinning it to make sure that the back plate's not rubbing on the clutch bell. Doesn't sound like we have any friction going on. Everything sounds good. So, time to throw all the fun kicker plates and the 10 gaskets and that whole situation together and hopefully the width of the clutch is the same so the kickstarter works the same I'm hoping all this is okay still alright we got a couple more parts for the poop today so we got a fork brace because I heard a lot of people talking about this 
and it just prevents the forks from pretty much having that flex where they want to walk on you. So that fork brace will go in there, it bolts up to the sides of the shocks, and uh, that should make that front end a lot stronger. We got some little hardware we're going to use for it, and then I went and got two front sprockets. So I have a 14 and a 13. Right now I have a 15 in there, but the gearing feels really, really high. So I went ahead and just grabbed two of these sprockets just to get out of the way, and we'll try that out. But uh, I think we're going to try it with how it's set up now. We'll throw the fork brace on, and we'll get the first ride on the Pook Maxi. I didn't want to change the rear sprocket because the rear sprocket is custom cut to fit this uh, custom CNC made rear hub for my rear disc brake. So it's harder to mess with the rear sprocket than it is to front. Well, I can't believe it, but it is time to finally, finally ride the Pook. I haven't got to ride it because the clutch situation last time, I just started it up. I tried it back here. The clutch feels a lot better. It still doesn't feel like it's perfect or we might have to mess with it a little bit more, but we're about to at least try it and see what it's like in the top end when it actually starts engaging because right here I could barely get the clutch to fully engage. Well. Got our temp gauge hooked up now. <laughs> Dude, this thing feels so funky. So yeah, bottom end is not there. It's like it finally gets the load out right there. Oh! Holy sh... Dude, it starts going. Wow! It's so top end though, like... We're probably going to be going like 35 right now and it's like... Like 2000 RPM, bro. Like, look at that. Oh, man. Oh, man. We got to lower that sprocket. I talked to a few homies that stunt these, and they told me that they still kind of have to push off on the starting line, though. Like, they're just geared like that, because single speed, you know, it's not CBT like a scooter. You're going to have either super top end or super bottom end. There's no really in between. You're eventually going to run out of gearing. But this one's just a little too top end for what I want it for. And then it hits power band right there. Oh! I don't want to go too hard on it. Still fresh build. Dude, this bike's set up right now, perfect for like cruising though, that's for damn sure. It's grabbing. Run out of fuel now. We're out of fuel now. All right, so Pook rips. It rips in the top end, but we gotta change some of the, the tuning and everything going on in the bottom end to pop the sprocket. Chain doesn't really want to come off this front sprocket, so I might be able to just pop the whole sprocket off with it. Make it a little easier. So, 15 tooth, just to really see what's going on. We'll go straight for the 13. I guess it's better to see the big difference, and then I can go back and forth from there. Change the front sprocket. We're running 13 with a 38 rear sprocket, and I uh, don't know how it's gonna do. The foot thing turned on me. That's annoying. I gotta put some glue in there. Oh! 
It's so squirrely. Oh, dude, it is squirrely. Let's check the gearing. It's a little rich on takeoff, that's the only thing. Holy shit. So the gearing changed a lot with that 13 tooth and we have like not much top end anymore. If I can get that to lean out a little bit on the takeoff, It does like 45 right now honestly it's not too fast it was doing like maybe 55 before 60 maybe but it seems a little rich dude see the fork brace we just put in right here when I was coming down on the wheelies I thought the forks were just completely clapped on this thing and there's just no travel in this sure as hell the fork brace we just put on is hitting right there which is weird because that fork brace I ordered was the right one for these legs. These mopeds, man, let me tell you, every single thing you buy doesn't work. Like You gotta custom make every single thing you buy on this thing. But uh, I think I'll end up just cutting off the back one, just leaving the front one. They sell them singular anyways, but uh, I just thought the double one was kind of cool. So we'll probably cut it after the second bolt so it still has that strength, and then uh, it should be fine like that. Pook is ripping though. And I was doing wheelies on it. I don't know if we'll be able to include that because YouTube's a crybaby about wheelies right now. Check out the Instagram. I'll post some clips on there of doing wheelies on it. But that thing was ripping just now. 13 2 sprocket is perfect for what I want to do on this thing. I'm not looking for this thing to go 65 just pinned on these tiny little skinny wheels. That's going to do it for the Pook Maxi today. Very excited that this thing finally showed its true potential today. And we finally, finally got to ride it. New clutch is absolutely amazing. Now next time it's just a little bit more carb tuning. Uh, possibly changing the sprocket to the 14. Maybe just going up one little gear once we get kind of used to this thing. And of course fix the little brace that's hitting on the front. But other than that it's just time to get some more riding in on this thing. And of course a little bit more upgrades uh, eventually like an ignition and so on. So uh, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure you guys stay tuned for more videos on the Pook. And I'll see you guys in the next one.